today's card new baby card which i've personalized specifically to the people receiving it with their names and the baby's names this is a stamped central image that's been hand colored ringed in blue matching blue around the edge just a little hint of ink around the center there but nothing on the edges keeping it very simple very clean cut For this project I will be making a new baby card and this time around these are the main supplies I'll be using. I have Promarker pens, I have a printed centre panel which says congratulations Graham and Hestina on the arrival of baby Teddy. I've got a, a matching white panel which is just slightly smaller, a piece of blue paper for matting and a cute little Kathy Shuttleworth new baby stamp set and I'm going to be using this little baby grow. I've got some versifying clear ink in a blue, anti-static pad, some distress ink from Tim Holtz and Ranger in speckled egg, a wow embossing pad for clear embossing and a scrap piece of paper, usual craft supplies, a ruler and a couple of round circle dies. So the first thing I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to cut the circle in the middle of my card. This is a clean and simple style card, which is one that I quite enjoy making. Um, I've sold plenty of these on my Etsy store, which is also called Crafts by John UK. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to cut a center circle out with an inner circle. I'm going to edge the outer one in blue, center gap, panel stamped underneath colored so that it just gives it a bit of depth. So the first thing to do is to get this in the middle and I'm going to measure that just using a ruler basically. So my card is 13 by 13. So if I line that up at roughly around three centimeters, that will be pretty much in the middle, 3.2 from both sides. That's about right. And then I'm just going to eyeball it into the center a little bit. There we go. I'm going to use some blue light tack tape just to hold that in place. Always stick on the inside just in case because if accidentally when you take the tape off it rips the card. If you put it on the outside you're stuck. So I'm going to cut that through in my Gemini which is well used and well loved as you can see. So that's cut and I'm now left with that white panel. This is the only trouble when you die cut even with this low tack tape it does sometimes make a mess when you take it off. I must admit this this one I get from scrapbook.com in the US I have found the best one. I've bought similar tapes <clears throat> in the UK but they don't seem to be as good if you ask me. Right, the second thing I'm going to do then, I need to cut a small piece of blue to go underneath. It doesn't need to be very big, so I'm just going to pretty much eyeball that and cut that with my craft knife if I can find it. There you go. This isn't going to be seen, so it doesn't matter how pretty that is at all. Okay, that can go on the scrap pile. And then I need to just cut with the smaller circle so it sits underneath. So somewhere in the middle. This time, I should have kept one of those pieces of blue tape, actually. Cut that. There we go, we've got a scrap piece of card, 
No, in fact, that's the piece of card we need. And a scrap circle. Which I might be able to use on another project if I keep it. <clears throat> Let's put them out of the way. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is mount this. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is just put a very, very pale blue around that. So I'm going to use some Distress Ink in Speckled Egg and I'm just going to very, very lightly. You almost won't see this, but it is a nice touch if you do see it. Speckled Egg is one of my favourite colours. It's a really nice addition to the Distress Ink family and I've got it in both Distress Ink and Distress Oxide. Um, if you're right-handed, it's useful to turn your project rather than try to turn your hand. If you have a natural way of doing something, don't try and do it the other way around. It's easier to move your project than it is to move your hand. So I'm just going round and round so we don't get any big blobs of colour. And as you finish and the ink pad's got less on it, you can be a little bit bolder about going over the cardstock. <laughs> You can see really, really lovely faded blue on the edge. Just gives it a nice little edging effect. <clears throat> All right, so first things I'm gonna do is probably mount this. So I will probably eyeball it like that and then Turn it over. See, I've got an interesting double rim there, which could be quite good at the top. So that looks about central to me. Actually, now I'm changing my mind on that. I'm going to glue it. That'll be easier. So a little bit of glue around the edge. That's all it needs, to be honest. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this down on top of it. So I'm going to stand up for this. And the glue just gives me a minute of wiggle room just to get that lined up perfectly how I want it. Which looks pretty much, I think, like that. Use the heat from your hand to just make that glue activate. And then what I will do is come in the back and just a couple of bits of double sided just to hold that firmly in place. Okay, so that's done. So we've already got our nicely inked edge and a blue interior. What I'm going to do next, put that aside for a second, I'm going to stamp my baby bro. I've used this stamp set a lot. I've made a lot of new baby cards, which always seems to sell well on Etsy. And this one is particularly cute. So that fits in there perfectly. Again, we don't need the whole piece of scrap, of course, it's only a tiny stamp. And I'm gonna stamp it actually in blue. So anti-static pad, just give that a rub and a blow. Ink this up gently. And just stamp that, but obviously leaving a little bit of room around it because I need an area to anchor it under the hole. Just give it a minute and give it a little wobble. Beautiful. Actually, I'm just wondering if that is not beautiful, in which case, let's just try one more. Actually, I prefer that one. Okay. Straight into my embossing powder and out with the trusty heat gun. Apologies for the noise. And this is where the magic happens. I always clear emboss, especially if I'm colouring because it gives you a little border to colour up to and it just really finishes off and sets the image. There we go, that's enough. I just cut that. That 
that piece will go back in the scrap pile because I might have screwed one piece up, but there's another side. There are no mistakes in crafting, remember. Right, just give this a clean. I always clean my stamps as I go along. I think it's good practice. Keeps them looking clean. This is a very versatile stamp set. I think I bought it second hand from somebody on a Facebook group, I believe. But there are some really cute stamps in here. I've used the pram, I've used the booties and the shoes, I've used the girl, the boy. In fact, I've used pretty much everything. I've hung clothes off the linen line. I've used the dummy and the bottle. So really good stamp set. And I think I paid one pound for it. So I do love a bargain, as do we all. Okay, right now I'm gonna color this. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna have deep blue in the heart and on the sleeves. And then I'm just going to go around. This pen is getting a bit dried up. We'll need replacing at some point. And then I'm going to use the duck egg to just go over that, blend that in. Just by going over the color I've already laid down. The alcohol inks will react and it will blend to a smooth, flat finish. Paying attention to the outer edges. And I'm also just going to go over the sleeves and the other colours. Because this is a fabric garment, it doesn't actually have to be that smooth. But you do want to get a pretty solid coat. I love these markers, they're my absolute favourite. There we go. Done. Let's give that a blow and you can see how cute that looks. Cool, now we need to fix this in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna lift this up and give it a bit of dimension. So we will probably put this on a blue border. So I'm gonna lift the whole thing up basically using pads, which I have here. So tweezers and I'm gonna put pads along the side into the corners I could do this with tape but I must admit the pads are close to hand you could also do this with some dimensional glue um, pin flare or something similar I must admit I have bought some I haven't got around to using it yet I love the idea of fancy glue, but when it comes down to it, I just tend to not use it that much. Okay, so that's our edge prepared. We also need to put a few bits in the middle here, but first of all, before we do that, we need to get our baby grow in place. So, it's gonna look something in fact that's upside down it's going to look something like that so just think about how that's gonna stick down so actually if i put a couple more pads around here we can use them to actually hold that in place and then it'll have nice buoyancy in the middle so let's peel all these off i always use my tweezers for this i know some people do it with their fingers but just find it quicker with tweezers to be honest i can get underneath the corner of the pads quicker and i usually do a couple at a time um one trick i have seen done is using glue on top of pads but to me that does seem a little bit overly zealous 
although I think it gives you again a bit of wiggle room if you're doing something complicated that needs lining up. But this is not that complicated. Okay, I'm peeling all of these off. Middle ones and edge ones. I need to clean these tweezers actually, they're, they're a bit sticky. And where I've put this tape, they are not sticking so well, so I should have peeled that off really. Tweezers are actually stuck together now as well, which is great. But we shall overcome. There we go, I think that's all of them. Okay, now, make sure we get this the right way up because that really would be helpful. And obviously, I'm gonna just do this piece first. So apologies if you can see my head slightly. Here we go. That's where I'm saying I'm gonna put that down. Lift that up relatively quickly. Put that onto my card base, or base layer anyway. Just eyeball that. That looks pretty damn good to me. Done there, but okay, let's cut that. So, again, just eyeballing it. I printed the I printed this design from PowerPoint. I've got templates set up in a very basic, simple PowerPoint template. I've got a six by six card base design that I've printed out and tested, sits beautifully. It's 14, in, 14 centimeters by 14 centimeters. It allows you to print really professional looking text because obviously we have stamps, etc. but when you try and stick lettering stamps together, it always looks a bit of a jumbled mess to me. So that's our main card basically um i would ordinarily ink around the edges but i'm actually leaving this completely blank so it is a clean and simple type card now i could put another layer of white which actually might look quite nice and just finish that off before it goes onto my card blank but let's have a look and see what that looks like I'd quite like to Change my mind about things as I'm going. Just flattening that with my bowl and folder. All right, let's have a look what that looks like because this is a smaller panel. I think it, actually it would look better with the extra layer, so I'm going to do that. Okay, double sided tape. Turning that. As I go, and I'm going to use my little bunny ears trick to position that and give me a little bit of wiggle room. You could stick it down with glue if you want, but this blue paper is not particularly thick, so I don't want to risk any glue wrinkles through the other side. Again, tweezers. Just lift a corner up, press it down. All the way around. Okay, and take our panel, which has got a slight crease in it, but we're going to cover that so it doesn't matter. And again, let's just eyeball that. We've got a slightly bigger gap left and right than we have top and bottom, but that doesn't matter as long as we get it pretty much in the middle. Okay, and I'm not sure what's happened there, but I've got a little dent in the side, which is great. Maybe 
not sure what's happened there. I'm just going to use an eraser on that. Let's see if I can just take that down a little bit. There you go. I don't think you'd really notice that. Okay, turn that over. Find the end of your tape and another layer of tape. Same bunny ears trick. This time onto our card blank. Just always check your sides just to make sure if you've got any marks or anything that need covering up. I think we're good. I do like this clean and simple style of card making. I went for a long period of time just making clean and simple cards. Just looking at this edge, I don't like that. I don't know quite what's happened there. It looks like the guillotine. Slightly missed a bit, there you go. That's corrected that. That's called card making on the fly. Okay, just before I do that, I'm going to check it's in the right place again. There we go, and before anybody messages me to tell me that I've spelt Christina wrong, that is actually the correct spelling of this Christina. And these are friends of mine who we walk our dog with. There you go. Congratulations, Graham and Christina, on the arrival of baby Teddy. And I will do a cute little inner for that as well. That's today's card. Thank you. If you enjoyed my card making, please like and subscribe my channel on YouTube. You can also find my cards to purchase on my Etsy store, which is also called Crafts by John UK. You can also find me on TikTok, Crafts by John UK, where I post very quick random card makes. Thank you for your support.